All right, we are recording. All right, hi guys. Hi. Hey, how are you all? Good. All right, so it's fun to see other people's faces. It is so good. <laughs> Besides my family. <laughs> yeah. My family doesn't want to see my face anymore, so it's actually just nice to have people who want to see my face. <laughs> <laughs> So Carmel, do you want to start since this is the book that you chose? Um, sure. So what did you guys think? I mean, did you guys, I mean, I, I gave it four stars. I, I did really, too. yeah, I didn't, you know, I feel like I didn't really love any of the characters and I really didn't connect with any of them. Same. But at the same time, because the premise was so interesting to me, I definitely wanted to see how each character was going to Right. kind of live their life having known their date and I also was interested to see like was the fortune teller correct like right. are you know was he right so I and think that the, the author was making a statement that it was not that the fortune teller was right but it was that these people had got this idea in their head early on in their lives and they made that happen the way they lived their lives they, yeah they got this date in their head and then they lived their lives according to that basically I, yeah, I was watching, I think that it's interesting yeah. about the connection with um, the four siblings. I felt the first two, I liked the way the author and um, the cadence of the book, how you followed sure. each sibling. I really enjoyed that. And that's what kept me wanting to read on. Should I we really, say real quickly, if you haven't read this book, guys, there are going to be spoilers today. Yeah. Yeah, yes, absolutely. absolutely. There will be spoilers. Spoiler. You haven't read Good it point. yet. Don't listen to us. Okay. Good point. Yes. Um, I found myself really intrigued with the first two siblings. Yes. Um, and yes. their stories. And then when I got to Daniel, I was like, okay. And then you know, so I really connected with the first two. The last two, not as much. Same. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if that's like also because I mean, the, we're all DIYers and you know, design-minded people. We're all very creative, and I felt like. Simon and Carla were much more free spirited and creative right. and Daniel and Varia were much more analytical type of people and, right. and lived more of what you would say is the responsible way, right. or, you know, the practical level headed, I guess. Yes. Yeah. And I don't, I don't connect with that either. <laughs> I found that Simon for me, I, I enjoyed reading the most and I don't know if I, I, read in too much to like, he just decided if I'm going to go, I'm going to live my life the way I want to live it. Um, but I found him to be the most passionate, I guess. Yeah. It was also, also the most risque. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also feel like the story, his story was the most complete. Yeah. Yeah. He got the most details about Simon and the fact that it drew his, what was his, uh, the younger sister, Clara, Carla. Yeah. Yeah. It drew Clara, Clara. Sorry, Clara, you're right. Yeah. I, I couldn't really relate to his story, but I liked his story the best. Same. Yes. Yes. Same. I agree. And I, I mean, I definitely felt like, I, I have to say, it was a little bit too detailed in the beginning with Simon for me with some of the sexual experiences. Yeah. And so I was like, and I had read reviews that this book, somebody called it like soft pornography. And, and so then of course that was the first sibling we read about. And I was like, eh, I don't know about this. That was all there was. Like yeah, the right. rest of the chapters yeah. didn't have anything like that. And it was really important that it started with his story because he was the youngest and because he was the first one to reach his time of death. Yeah, you know? right. Well, it's um, also San Francisco in the 80s with the gay yes. man, right? It's kind yeah. of, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. See, I actually, I liked Simon as a character. Like I liked him. I just felt like his life was the saddest to me and not because he died. Bad. It was. Not because he died young, but more because I felt like he was so reckless mm, yeah. he really never like experienced like true intimacy. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he was just, mm. I don't know. Like, I just felt like he really didn't have like a true, like meaningful, like he had a partner, but it was like, he never really showed up for the partner mm. the way that partner showed up for him. I think mm. he so I feel like he kind of missed out on like really what a real relationship yeah. is. And I felt sad for him for that. Well, you know, you always hear they say that like, um, like there's some kind of expert out there on death or whatever, and there's some book about this, but they say that the one regret that everybody has when they die is not, you know, living to their full potential or doing, doing like living up to who they knew they could be. And mm -hmm. I felt like we saw that a little bit with him, you know, on his deathbed and, and 
and how he really truly felt about Robert and how he really regretted how he had treated him. So I think there was a little yeah. bit of that at the very end, but I, I definitely, yeah. think that he was a little reckless. And Can I just say that I love that Robert made a comeback and later in the yes! story. <laughs> that, was that was like, I was like, I didn't know I needed that until the, the best. Like, yeah, yeah, probably my favorite character. <laughs> you know, like as far as like likability and person, yeah, you just yeah. know, like he was a really good person. His story was so good, even if it was brief. Yes. <laughs> I thought yes, that I it, it, the, the, the premise of the book in each character, though, I thought was a really good exploration of what would you do if you knew the very last day of your life. And every single, all four of them, I thought, handled it so differently um, that it gives you a lot to think about because Simon just like went for it. He was like, if this is it, if I'm going to die, you know, at this time, I'm going to just live my life and do me. You know, and then you've got like the older sister. I can't pronounce. She was Abaria. She was like the Baria. exact opposite. Right. Like, yeah. I live by it's myself like, in this tiny apartment with no decorations. And I'm going to prove <laughs> that this isn't right. And yeah. I'm going to prove through you know logic and science that this is like you know this is all just. Yeah. So I thought it was really interesting to think and about her how experiments. I, right. How parallel right. they were. Yes. You know? Right. Exactly. And so it makes you think like, okay, who who do I? Um, who do I, how would I, how would I act? What would I do? You know? Who, who would you say yeah, that, absolutely. who would you be? Uh, I don't, I really, you know, I, I don't think I know a hundred percent. I think I really, really liked um, Clara the most. I thought that, you know, the, there were so many um, interesting parts of her character and how she just kind of used you know, the unknown and magic to tell her story. I thought it was, she was my favorite. I don't know that I'm her though. I'm probably closer to Daniel where I'm just like, man, I'm more level-headed. <laughs> I have a family. I'm just going to do my thing. But he surprised me in the very end. I felt like that was the best plot twist. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very interesting. He definitely you know, I seemed was... the angriest. Oh yeah. Like, didn't he seem like he was the angriest about the, about that yeah, the, the, the other three didn't really seem. Yeah, yeah. And I, don't that know, was like, really and I found her, even her story like interesting too. When we got her backstory of her family, and I was kind of like, I, I honestly was like, she didn't never asked for payment. Like she wasn't really scamming them. She was just telling them information. And so, I don't know that I really felt like she was part of a scammy tribe of gypsies. You know, I just felt like maybe she was right. just living her truth and she really could tell. I don't know. I mean, I believe in that kind of boo-woo stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think when I ended the book, I I was thinking about the fortune teller and I think that if I would have gone to a fortune teller as a child and was given a date, I would have been really affected. I would have been like Daniel, I think, and like focused on that date. And I don't know. It's like, it's kind of sad that they were children, right? And like right. Yes. They made a decision as a child and then it affected all of their lives in so many unique ways. Just interesting. Well, well yeah, and I feel like if we look back on ourselves as children, we may have made that same decision out of curiosity. But I know if, if I was given the choice right now, if somebody said, hey, would you like to know? I would say no. No, no. thank you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> same. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to live my life with that cloud over my head, even if that cloud isn't until I'm 90. I don't want to Right. Know. Yeah. Sorry, Tracy, what were you going to say? Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't remember. I lost my train of thought. Sorry. All right. It was kind of interesting because I think too, like they all wanted to, to kind of go. I mean, obviously they were sort of like, wasn't it? Um, it was Kayla who kind of wanted the rest of them to go see this fortune teller, right? Am I, yeah. am I remembering I, it right? I thought it was Daniel who came home. Was it him? I was the okay. I can't. I he, he overheard it from some friends. At the deli. Okay. Yeah. And then he wanted to go the check it out. Older, okay. Right? Yeah. And then he yeah. decided we let's all go. That's how it happened. So maybe that was why, okay, now that I'm remembering, yeah, then maybe that was why he was so upset is maybe. because maybe he felt like he was responsible for getting his siblings into that and hearing that. But it was interesting because I feel like, I mean, obviously there's no way to know, but I, I don't know that even as a young person that I would have had the curiosity right. to want it. I think I would have been weirded out and yeah. 
like too mm. scared to go I don't see know someone. I would have believed it either as a child. Like, I don't know. I would have been like, ah, oh, whatever, you know, like I think I, when I was a kid, I remember seeing, you know, when you go to like tourist places and there's like, go get your palm read. I mean, I got that done a couple of times when I was like 12. <laughs> so cool. I don't even remember what they said or what they told me was going to happen in my life. So I don't know that I would really have actually put any value in it. Do you think though that that experience, because there is so much um, integration of like magic and their different beliefs throughout the book and how each of them either did or, or rejected the idea of just that, you know, mysticism. Do you think that because of that encounter that that's what really did that for them? Or do you think that was already there to begin with? I think we saw with the the one who was really into magic, she was doing that already Clara. as a really young child. Clara, well, yes. their grandmother was a, a yes. really fit, yes. right. Yeah. So I I'm like a little bit of already there. Yeah. What do you guys think about the uh, family relations? Like I, <clears throat> I don't have a, like a lot of siblings and I'm not close to the, the one I do have because there's a big age gap. So I was, it was interesting. I felt like to read the, how the, you know, certain siblings kind of like stuck together and the, how the mom and dad seemed disconnected completely. But what did you guys think of all that? Yeah, I'm like you, Ashley, I only have one sister and there's a 10 year age difference. Yeah. So I don't, from a personal standpoint, I don't relate to that, but it was an interesting dynamic. It felt very honest to me because I, there are some things that they hid from their, their siblings and, you know, weren't as open. And so I thought that that felt really real to me. Yeah, I felt like it was interesting in the beginning when Simon decided to just go ahead and leave and follow his, you know, dream or whatever, or just kind of, you know, live his life. It was interesting to me that Daniel was so mad at him for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just, that was kind of the only part. I mean, I don't, I'm basically an only child. I have two half siblings, but they're huge age difference. And also we have different moms. Um, but it was interesting because I always feel like it's not usually like the baby of the family that anyone really relies on usually. Right. I mean, in most, you know, sibling, um, that I know of, it's not usually the younger one that anyone would look to, to be the, you know, quote unquote responsible one of the family. So that was an interesting thing for me to read that, you know, that there was so much animosity there that he just decided to take off and leave and kind of altered the lives of Daniel and Mara um, in terms of like her not going back to school right away and kind of staying with the mom. Um, so, so it's you about know, like, you know, owning, owning your own decision and owning your life. And I mean, let's be honest, like Simon owned who he was and that's why he went and did that. And I think that there was a little bit more animosity because they were resentful that they weren't doing that in their own lives. They were being the responsible ones and not following maybe what their true path could be. Like, you know, Varya putting everything off because, you know, yeah, I think that maybe that's where a little bit of that resentment came from. Not that Simon left, but that ugh, we have to be he was living the life ones. he wanted and they weren't right. They right. were still trying to be responsible and say, and, and yeah. you know, comfort the mother who was so devastated you know, and they were still stuck there where he was off living his yeah. best life. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly, I listened to um, Brene Brown's podcast this morning and she was talking about um, an anxiety, how there are two types of people. There are the over and the under, and I can't remember what the over and under was, but the over, like that person acts and takes charge and does everything. And the under is like, needs help and and a lot of times it's the older sibling is the over and like so she had a story of her own um past how she had like her mom was in the hospital and she took charge over everything and her younger siblings were like well we can help too even though they might not have taken order you know or taken charge they're there and they can help and i think it it just made me think of this story with the over and the under and and yeah the older sibling having that i have an older brother who's two years older than me and we're relatively close and I, when I was listening to her podcast, of course, I was thinking about my own life and going, yeah, I'm in crisis. I'm definitely not the one who's going to take charge. Like I'm like, somebody tell me what to do. Hmm. <laughs> See, I'm an over. <laughs> so could you tell me what to do right now? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, interesting. I, yeah, that is interesting. I'm an over too. Um, yeah. 
you know, Simon, though, when you, you were saying that he took charge, I kept thinking of, though, like, if his dad hadn't have died, would mm. he still be there? Mm. Would he have, like, no. gone against that male role in his I life? I don't think so. No. Yeah, yeah I, I don't either. No. I don't know. I think, I mean, he, if Clara had still gone, I think he may have and maybe would have felt a little bit less guilty about it even because, you know, and maybe there wouldn't have been the resentment from Daniel and Varya as well because his mother wouldn't have been alone and that was the whole issue. But wasn't he the one that was supposed to like continue the sewing shop? Yes. Yes. So, like when I, when I think of like um, family businesses, there seems to be from what I've seen, I'm not in one, but like there seems to be like some really strong ties and like emotions can like, it seems like the next generations continue it on, you know? Yeah. So that's, I just don't know if he would have bucked the trend of, of that family business, but I don't know. This is what I was thinking was going through my head. Yeah. Yeah. It de the storyline definitely like towed that line between like, again, like what we were saying in the beginning of, how much is just predetermined? Like how much is destiny and how much is just based on the decisions and choices that we make? Like self-fulfilling, right? Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like yeah. I think I'll, I, I kept thinking like after Simon, when we got into the other three, I kept thinking like it felt for me more self-fulfilling than predestined, right? It felt more mm -hmm. like the decisions that I'm going to make probably as a result of knowing my date are like, like leading me right toward that path. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> yeah yeah you want me to pull a discussion question out of the back sure yeah okay <clears throat> oh this is a good one discuss the sibling significant other raj mira and robert how are their lives affected by the prophecy how do romantic and family relationships interact in contrast so Mira was um, Daniel's, Daniel's wife, uh -huh. right? Okay. Yep. Robert was Simon and Raj was the yep. gymnast, or not the gymnast. What's her name? Clara? Clara? Is it Clara? Yes. Clara? Yeah. One of those. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I think we already kind of touched on Robert, right? Yeah. How we all really, Raj, you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we all loved Robert. He And, and I, I always, what I always find interesting um, is that like with those sibling relationships and with the people that they choose, like I've found this actually throughout my own life. I always dated somebody who was an older brother of a younger sister. And I feel like there's something huh. in that relationship. And I felt like Robert was just so responsible and, you know, he was much older than Simon for sure, but he had gone through so many experiences that Simon kind of was never going to that. that. Yeah. But he needed, yeah. he needed that. He ne and he needed that anchor that Robert offered. Mm. Yeah. I that interesting. I thought it was interesting too, that did none of the, um, am I remembering right? That none of the spouses knew or had heard about their experience. Right. That was until weird. Toward the end. Right. Like, yeah, I just, especially for Daniel where it's like, they had the long, a yeah. long relationship, the longest relationship of, of any of them. And still, didn't have, yeah, sorry, that's a good point because I can't imagine not telling my husband something that that's significant right. in my life. Yeah, but maybe they were trying to. I, I, if I really believed it, if I like knew I was going to die in a year, and I believed that, I, I don't know. That also might. It's hard to say what you would and wouldn't do if it was real. Yeah. You know. I, yeah, I would definitely share it with the people that I that had the same like. I mean, they went to it. The siblings went and they didn't even talk about I it. They talked to me with each other. Yes, right. <clears throat> for sure. It was weird that they didn't talk about it. Like I could see myself not honestly not talking to Chris about it because he and I have very different beliefs when it comes to things like that. And so he would just look at me like I was crazy, but <laughs> sorry, there goes a shirtless child. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are the highlights of the Zoom calls. Come yeah, on. Totally. Totally. <laughs> what, 11 o'clock and the teenagers emerging. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what, what did you guys think of Raj? Because I, did he actually love her? Or 
like I, I couldn't for the think, lifestyle and that. it was a weird relationship for sure like I feel like yeah maybe he was more drawn to the lifestyle than actually loving her and then it was like he went on and you could call it that he was you know like carrying on her legacy but it was really like he made a career based off of starting with her exactly yeah, yeah. i feel like they just kind of like pulled together and it just was convenient it was their mm -hmm. a lifestyle that he was drawn to yes i feel bad yeah. for her for that because like i don't know i like at the core i think someone truly deserves to be loved by for more than just it works like it's easy. I don't know. Yeah. That's, like a, yeah. that's like, like a best friend or a business partner that of the opposite sex, yeah. not like It a, felt like a business partner. Yeah. 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 But, but you can see like, that also like playing out with the daughter now, like as the daughter is like not wanting to do the business and wanting to, you know, be her own person and pursue her own dreams. Yeah. And you but can I see him kind of doing the same so thing smart. with her. Like she was, yeah. she was clearly, even though he was raising her to be his business partner, basically, she was also so open-minded and so intelligent and so accepting of other people and that um that uh sorry a little window popped up that um he did a great job raising her like i will say that so yeah i could have seen the daughter and i don't remember her name being like really close to daniel like they kind of like they yeah. kind of like gave you a snippet of what that relationship could have been he he felt like it felt like he really wanted that yeah. and so i think i was really sad at the end of his story to see that he didn't get to have that true relationship. He yeah. was so sad to me. Like, he was a very depressing character. <laughs> I know. I, I yeah. just remember at one point being like, oh no, this is, this isn't how it had, like it's, something's gonna just, just hurt. I'm trying not to give away too many spoilers, but I remember. I think it's fine, like, yeah. We already said that there were gonna be spoilers, you're fine. Yeah. Right, yeah. I just was yeah. shocked. Like I don't, I don't know why I was so shocked. I kept like reading, thinking like, oh, it, you know, that was just kind of a, a twist. He's going to come back. And then I was like, holy cow, did that yeah. really happen? Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was almost shocking. It just seemed that Unreal. ending part, that for him, I had to like, that, it. the way he ended seemed so out of character. Like, right. Was, Same, I don't know. I'm and then like, you wonder, no. like, was that who he really was? Like, I really? Was. And he <laughs> just never lived who he really was? And it yeah, happened yeah. so quickly that it was, like, it. confusing to me. I really did have to go back and read it. Like, I'm like, yeah, like you said, you're like, did that really just happen? You know? Yeah his, yeah, his personality seemed like he tried to keep everything, like, so pushed down. But you did see moments of, like, his anger towards Simon. There were some moments in his character development where you kind of saw that. And then I think it just came to a head. And yeah. it could have been the pressure of knowing today's the day or whatever. But... I still, it just still felt unreal reading through. I was like, whoa, which is good. It made it, it made it a really good read, you know. It was and the good. police officer character, I can't remember his name, but uh, I felt like he was so interesting too. And we haven't talked about him yet, like how he, he right. was really in love with, like legitimately in, in love. I mean, not that he got to know her, but one of those infatuation kind of loves with um, Clara. Yeah. <laughs> so his story was kind of sad too. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, all of their stories were a little, I mean, obviously were a little bit sad, but it was interesting to me that the author, it's like almost like the characters, the siblings that died young are the ones that, in my opinion, lived the most fulfilled lives. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas the ones that lived longer, you know, you just, like you said, their, their lives were just kind of depressing. Yeah. But they lived, you know, for so many years. And even, like, jumping ahead to Varya, even when her son came into the story, that all of a sudden yeah. her long lost son was the alive that she'd given for adoption, they still never really got a deeper connection. Like, it was like, oh, I would send him cards here and there, and we kept in touch. But it wasn't like, I don't know, I, I was expecting it to maybe change her life a little bit more than it did. Yeah, same. She, I, I felt the same. She was like, so she lived the longest, and yet I feel like she had the least amount in her life. Like, I don't know. I cannot, I, I, her story was so sad because I, I just can't imagine living the life she did. And like, 
like the, the, the thoughts about the food. Like I can't even remember exactly yeah, what when she, she was eating the foods that was ba the basically she was depriving these monkeys to do this study to see if like if they could live longer they could live longer right. yeah, if so it was a longevity was trying, study yeah. yeah so she was basically trying to live longer do the, same, well, thing. With right. the same thing and eating these tiny little portions of like monkey right. food but i think yeah. again it, it it goes back to like the the underlying like i think she was so obsessed with doing everything she could to defy this yeah. like prediction and but in her way that was that was how she handled it. Like in her weird way, she just was like, if I do, it was almost like an obsessive compulsive yeah. thing. But then they talked point, about right, the study, where, like who was it? Was it her son that brought up the point to her about that study? How like, but they're not living a life. Like they may yes. live a longer life, but look at, look at the quality of it, you know? And then she yeah. was a living example of that, of her experiment. Her quality right. of life was terrible. And then she had like that favorite one, right? That yes. really she started to feel. So was that like symbolic of her? Did she start to see herself and start to realize like, Probably. shoot. Yeah. Yeah. But then I felt yeah. like with her son, she kind of got that second chance to maybe like, and everything that happened, you know, she got that second chance to try again and she just didn't take it. Mm. Yeah. But that depressed me. <laughs> Like I was sad to be ending it with her story because I felt like hers was just, her life was meaningless. And she yeah. lived like the, in the eighties, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, when I, when we had first talked about this, like we had talked about it on Instagram saying we were going to read this book. I got quite a few messages saying that people found it like really depressing and maybe it wasn't the best book to read at this time. Uh, yeah. that's a good point <laughs> and uh like I so now I see what they're saying yeah but like when I just really think about it I just I found it so interesting and it wasn't a five star for me but it was I like honestly didn't find it that depressing because it was just so interesting yeah and I didn't find yeah. it depressing because my takeaway was like I said I thought the author was saying that we have a choice to make you know, with what we're going to make of our lives. And so that's, that was my takeaway. It wasn't like, oh man, this is depressing and I'm going to die one day. And if, you know, it was more like, I don't know when I'm going to die, but I'm going to make the most of my life while I'm here. Absolutely. The, that's what I took from it too. And the relationships that you have and the people in your lives and, you know, yeah. You know, right now we're all stuck together and like, you know, I mean, you could probably ask that one back there, but <laughs> <laughs> might not be prime relationship time ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it did make me think a lot about if I knew my date, what what would I do differently? You know what I mean? And I think I that like, it's a late expiration. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, I think we all have those moments of we're not living to our fullest, we're putting things off, you know, or whatever. And it's just like, it makes you think, gosh, what am I not doing that if, if I knew that I would do differently, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I do think that reading it at this particular time in history actually just, I don't know, it gave you like a, even just a, maybe a better perspective. Cause instead of feeling depressing to me, it just really made me think about like what really matters in life mm -hmm. and what like am I grateful what, for? yeah. So I don't know for me, even though the story itself is not uplifting or inspiring, no. No, no. It definitely makes you like think and reflect yeah. on your own life. And I don't know that that feels like a good thing to do, especially at this particular time. So yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I think and we're all in this place of like, you know, it's, we're all stuck right now and stuck at home and everything, but yeah, it's, you know, what can you do with this, you know, one wild and precious life or as I don't know if you saw the meme, what, what would you do with your one wild and precious trip to the grocery store? <laughs> Uh, seriously, <laughs> like, what you? seriously, like, you know, that's what makes me think, like, what would I do right now, you know? It, there was one line in the book that, like, really stuck with me that I absolutely loved, and it was um, when Clara was, I can't even remember who she was talking to, but they were asking her what the trick was to that jackhammer trick, you know, that she like held on to the yeah. rope and her skin. It sounded so painful. Right. Yes. It was like, you know, tell me what the trick is. And she's like, there's no trick. You just hang on. And yeah. I thought that was yeah. like so profound. You know what I mean? Oh. It was like, yeah, you know, we're all yeah. just hanging on. There's no yeah. trick to like making it great or perfect. 
Yeah. That yeah. to me really was a, like a moment I had to stop reading and just like marinate on that, that, you know, yeah. that comment. Yeah. Yeah. Her character was the most interesting, I think because she lives like she was, cre she's creative. So I could connect to that part of it, but then mm -hmm. also just her, what she was doing is so like out of the box of pretty much anybody that I know in like yeah. real life, you know, just doing the show and the magic and all of that. I don't know. Just that was all really interesting to me. Yeah. And how it ties back to like her belief of, you know, did she really believe in the magic? And if so, did she believe in that like date? You know what I mean? I think it was yeah. all like intertwined so well. Yeah. I was, I was sad that, and I guess we haven't talked about this yet, how, her, how her life ended, but that she took her own life. Yeah. Uh, I, even though like her date was there and everything, I don't know that just, that one bugged that me. That made a me bit. sad. Yeah. Yeah. Made me it's really like, sad. I almost with her character wanted to have, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie sliding doors. Oh yeah. yeah. But I wanted to almost have like a second version of her life. Like if they yeah. didn't go yeah. to yeah. the, like, yeah. yeah. Decide to take her life and she had done her act would she have had an accident on stage yeah. like in yeah. my mind as i was reading that's what i, that's I, was what I thought was gonna happen too. yeah right yeah so yeah that was really interesting yeah yeah and it felt so bad for her daughter yes that, that moment when she's like you know passing her daughter to the child care and she already knows what she's gonna do oh yes. that was like heartbreaking that's, that's part of why it really bugged me because i was like you don't you could just go on stage and see what happens. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes you wonder, like, would it have happened? You know? So. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Well, Again, it's like, was it all, did they, did they push themselves toward what was right. happening? Yeah. Like, did Simon's like just blaze in lifestyle? Was that why? Yeah. you know, he got like, it just, yeah. yeah. It all, I mean, he didn't was care because he knew he felt like his life was going to he end. He thought he was going to die earlier. Him. Yeah. Reckless. And then like, he put himself in the situation where, you know what I mean? And it's like, with yeah. Her. Yeah. Like if, if his, Daniel if he had been the one who was told, go ahead, Ashley. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, if Daniel would have just stayed home, you know, would he choked on a, yeah. yeah. You know, who knows? Right, well, and I right. wonder, like, if Simon had been told yeah. if Arya's date, or if they had been switched, they were the opposite. Would Simon have been reckless? You know, I don't know. So, do you think he knew he was being reckless? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. We, we know that now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I don't. First, I don't, I don't think he did in that sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, the it wasn't the. I mean, I get that it was the '80s, but it wasn't the yeah. '70s. Like, I do feel like he was. I mean, we, we did know some stuff in the eighties, right? Like in terms of just like being safe. Well, and like, yeah, I was gonna say, let's be honest, like, like unprotected promiscuity is bad no matter where you are in life and where you are in history. Yeah. A hundred percent. And no matter who you're having sex with, you know? Yeah. I guess the recklessness isn't, you know, I don't know if he knew he was being reckless to the extent that he would die from it, but I right. think he knew he didn't care. He didn't care because he knew he was going to die. He just didn't care and was going to make choices regardless, you know, where yeah. some of us like will make different choices because we have responsibilities. You know, we, I, I think that was out the window for him. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to die young. So I'm going for it. Yeah. So would you guys recommend this to your girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a really good read. Definitely yeah. worth it. Yeah. I think it's definitely one that you want to read. You want, you want to talk about after you read it. Yeah. I'm so glad. So I feel like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like it's a good one for a group of friends or a book club. You know, I don't know if I would have enjoyed it as much if I was just reading it and then get to the end and not have anybody to talk to you about it. Right. I just feel like there's just, you know, it brings up so many different things that you just, you want to talk about it. So it took me some time to be able to pick up another book. And that's how I know sometimes that a book really hit me. Like if I, oh. if, if I finish a book and I'm ready to pick up another book the next day, then I'm like, I didn't, I wasn't connected to that one, but this one took me a few days. So <laughs> I think this is the best pick yet. 
Yay! Good job, Carmel. <laughs> so Ashley, you would then obviously recommend it to your friends. Yeah, as I agree though. I think it needs to be talked about. Yeah. And what do you what do you guys think? I mean, I know Carmel and I, we both felt like the biggest takeaway was, you know, about your trajectory in life and whether it's, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy or not. What do you guys think? What's your biggest takeaway? I think that thinking more like like we don't know when we're gonna die. They obviously like believed when they were gonna die. But I think more about like daily what matters. Like some of the things that I do are frivolous, but I enjoy them, so that matters mm -hmm. to me because it's like a pleasure, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I think really more about the relationships in yeah. my day-to-day -day life and how to um, connect more with people. Like I um, <clears throat> personally, like people for me, um, I would rather have like less of the exterior people in my life and connect more, spend more time with the, the people that are in that, that I share real life with. And so like when I think about the relationships in this book, there's so many there's there's few characters or few characters for each person that just never had real relationships and that was just such a miss and like I don't know I just feel like the people that are in my life I need real connection with and that's that's where I want to put my focus so that's kind of my takeaway yeah I, I agree I was going to say the exact same thing I think there's something about the power of connection that you either got or you didn't get with some of these characters and that to me really got everybody thinking deeply about the type of connections or the lack of, you know, and you go to, um, Vira at the end and how sad her life was because she didn't have those relationships and those connections, even with some of the most important people or person in her life. And I think that that's where it makes you really stop and think about how precious every day is and how important and how much work it is to have those relationships and those connections with people. So I think that was a big takeaway for me. Anybody else? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it was interesting that we didn't really hear or see friends for any of the characters, really, yeah. right? Like, I mean, they had partners or spouses, but yeah. like, yeah, I mean, the that, was, that was my interesting for sure. That, and, um, and Clara, when they were first out in San Francisco and like had friends that they lived with and friends that they would hang out with sometimes. Yeah. And that's where Raj was introduced at first. Yeah. So there were, there were them with their little group, but yeah, they were the only ones. That is, I hadn't thought of that, but like, honestly, my closest friends are like, those are my people. And like, I'm closer to them than some of a lot of my family, you know? Hmm. That's really interesting that you brought that up. I hadn't thought of that. Huh. Yeah. That's sad. There were, there were definitely, well, and maybe there were more that we just didn't see. There were just, you know, I felt like there were a lot of stories condensed into this one book and she probably could have done, I, I imagine that it was probably a lot bigger when she started and, and was edited way down. Yeah. I think it would be a great movie. Yeah. Mm, it Who would. would. Who would you cast? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I could see maybe like a Matt Damon playing Daniel. Yeah, 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 for sure. I don't know about the other characters. Well, Clara had like beautiful red hair, right? So <laughs> maybe, I don't know. But she would need to be young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know any of the young actresses. That's I don't either. I That's what I'm too like. Too old these days. <laughs> Same. <laughs> like Julia Roberts, she's still young. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know. I have to think about it for sure. But I could see like um, what the Chamolet, whatever his name is, being Simon. Oh yeah, that'd be good. No. Yeah. I don't even know who that is. I don't either. <laughs> I can't even come up I'm with like, a oh. name. So I'm like, yeah. you know. <laughs> in the movie, um, is it Say Say My Name? Is that what it's called? I think that's oh right. Oh my gosh, I'm totally blanking on it. 
I only knew it because when I was managing at J. Crew a couple of years ago, I worked with a bunch of like 20 year olds. <laughs> <It was awesome>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in the world of kids TV right now. So anything that's not appropriate for an eight year old. That one's probably not. <laughs> I don't, I don't get to live that life right now. Yeah, I hear you. All right. Well, do you guys want to end it here? It's been like a 40, 45 minute conversation. Do you want to talk about the next book really quickly, Cass? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe we I started can... it. Have you guys, any of you started it? Mm -mm. I just got it the other day. It just okay. came in the mail. So it's, um, or actually actually take it trouble. um I don't I'm have to order it right now. But it's um, basically about this guy, Toby Fleischman, who is uh, just post-divorce. And um, I don't really know a whole lot of the premise, but it sounds like he kind of makes a mess of his life. Um, and to be honest, I started reading it last night. I got about 50 pages in. And, and right before that, I had seen a friend, um, if you guys follow Elise at Fox Family Den, she had just oh, yeah. posted a story about how she hated it. And I was like, no, oh, no. <laughs> and so the, I read that, or like I saw that before I even started reading it. And, um, and I messaged her and I was like, oh no. And she was like, I'll take my story down. I don't want your people to see it. I was like, oh no, you're fine. Um, but I actually am really enjoying it so far. Okay. Like he is definitely making a little bit of a mess of his life, but it, I don't know. I'm finding it kind of interesting, so. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys read reviews before you read books? I usually no. don't. Like, do you read the reviews about people? No. Yeah, no, but I don't, I don't know why I did it with The Immortalist. I think because I just didn't know what it was about. I had no clue. So then I scrolled down, looked at the reviews, and then I like saw, you know, and of course, like the five-star reviews don't intrigue me like the one-star reviews. So I always go mm. to the one-star. I'm like, well, why did they hate it? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I just I, said, I, I, I only know. read the jacket. And then I'm, but, but the thing with me in books is if it doesn't catch me in like the first, I don't know, 25 pages, then I can't get yes. into a book. Like I have a really hard time pushing through. And so if it wasn't for this group, there are a lot of books that I just wouldn't fit. Like I, the last I have, we did, I had oh, yeah. reading that like I, three years ago and then I had such a hard time and I put it I away. Such so a like, hard time yeah. with that book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> his writing style, I've tried to read multiple books of his and his writing style just is not I just, I can't get into it. I don't know why. Have you tried Bear Town? No, I tried That's a man one. called Ove and I got halfway through and I just couldn't. I was like, Meh. I, I like Bear Town, Town, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will have to say, I read people that I follow on um, Goodreads. I read their reviews. Mm. Uh, like if it's a book I'm kind of interested in, but I want someone I follow did review this and say they put it down because of, they felt like the, the sex part was I too was just the beginning I that's why I felt that. like it's just the very beginning and it really is important to the story just get through that and then you'll be done with it you know it didn't yeah. bother me any yeah. but I, I I could see how some people would be bothered by that you know um but I was I was interested to see what it was going to be like <laughs> for sure definitely was yeah. I think a um unexpected surprise in a good way for me the sex <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what I say every time. No, um, <laughs> <the book. laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, that was an unexpected surprise, honey. <laughs> sorry, I had to. <laughs> so, if we should we share if we can figure this out, we're gonna invite anyone who's reading the next book with us to join in on the Zoom call. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we'll figure it out. We can, I have faith. Yeah. I think it'd be fun. I can barely, you know, get dressed every day, but I have faith that we can figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Something I, look forward to. I hit stop recording now. Okay. So look out for that guys and join us next time.